Okay, the selectman for the town of Lincolnville, Maine, Jonathan Fishman. He's been a big advocate of ranked choice voting. He also happens to be the drummer of my favorite band, Fish. John, thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Explain why you think ranked choice voting is a solution uh, to, to electoral problems we have in this country. Uh, well, the typical catchphrase that's used uh, to describe it is more choice, more voice. Um, it will, it, it, it makes it impossible to win an election without an actual majority of the voters supporting you. And the way that we vote now with what's commonly refer, referred to as plurality is if you have 100 voters and 38 vote for one person and 32 for another and 30 for a third candidate, the person who has the most votes out of 100 would win, but that's not a majority of the voters. And so Maine has come up with a way well, Maine hasn't come up with a way. It's the way that they vote in Ireland and the way they voted in Australia for 100 years. Um, but it's a, a way of, of voting which ensures that a majority will eventually be reached, a, a broader consensus of the feeling of the electorate. It's not, not impossible. Not just people's first choice. It's not impossible to get a 50%, uh, uh, over 50% that happens quite a lot. But in those elections where 50% isn't reached uh, and you get 30% of the vote, maybe in a presidential election where a third party candidate comes in and, and siphons off 10% of the vote or even 4% of the vote, or maybe 20%, whatever it right. is, and it ends up where it's not a clear 50% majority, you think that what this does is that it allows voters to vote for somebody that there's more consensus for rather than elect an official that only has a, a minority of voters behind them. Correct, yes. I mean, and, and, and again, in ranked choice voting, if in the first tally of the votes, one of the candidates gets over 50 percent, then they win. There aren't, there aren't any further. It's just the, the same as any other vote. But in the case where there isn't a clear majority, then they go to the second and third place. You know, they look at who the, who the voters voted for in second and third place, and, and eventually a candidate gets 50 percent. But it ensures that you... And it also gives a chance for third-party candidates uh, third parties and fourth parties to become viable over time. Right now, we just have two dominant parties uh, that, you know, basically own a monopoly on it. When you walk into a voting booth, if you're interested in the Green Party or an independent or you know Libertarian Party, uh, it's essentially a throwaway vote. Let's be honest. I mean, you go in and you know that uh, uh, your 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 candidate's not going to win. And in fact, in all likelihood, that vote for that third candidate is going to probably help the candidate that you least want. Uh, to win, and and that's a problem with plurality voting. Uh, with ranked choice voting, you can actually vote your heart. You can vote what you want instead of your your you know your fear. You can vote so what you, you can actually vote, you want. So you can vote for the independent if you like the independent, and also vote then for your second choice, which might be the Democrat or the Republican, because you feel like I'm not throwing away my vote by by just voting for the independent and and ending ending up with the candidate that I don't want. Um, there are a few other places. Exactly. Yeah, there are a few other places that are that are considering this. Um, we can put them up on the screen: uh, Berkeley, San Francisco, Oakland, a few places in California, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Portland, um, San Leon, Leandro, California, Santa Fe, Tacoma. Tell your ride. So it's not an un, a popular, not an un, or not an uh, unheard of idea. It's certainly being considered. But there are critics out there, John, that say that this is going to favor the Democrats. This sort of voting, it's not going to be good for Republicans. Um, on Maine Public Radio, um, they said this: just as progressive activists embraced ranked choice voting two years ago as a way of fixing Democrats' lackluster performances in elections with multiple candidates, Republicans are increasingly viewing the system as an ex existential threat to hardline conservative candidates. What do you think of that? No, that, that's simply not true. That the, the, the beauty of ranked choice voting is that it's, it's actually totally nonpartisan. It does not favor Republicans. It doesn't favor Democrats. It favors the voter. It puts more power in the voter's vote. It gives the voter a broader choice. Instead of just having to vote one, you get to rank how you would prefer them to fall. And to, to explain it, if, when you look back at some of the big elections that most Americans remember, when George W. Uh, Bush ran against Gore, Ralph Nader was largely vilified for you know, having cost Gore that election. But if you had ranked choice voting back in George H.W.'s 
uh, candidacy against Bill Clinton, Ross Perot siphoned off a lot of votes from George H.W. And you could equally, for the, from the Republican side, make an argument that George H.W. might have likely gotten a second huh. Uh, term yeah. had Perot not safe enough votes from him. And the argument is that you will get you'll get less extreme candidates, candidates who are more down the middle. Uh, Jonathan Fishman. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayner. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I'll see you on New Year's Eve. In the meantime, we'll be right back. The meeting of the Executive Finance Committee is now in session and adjourned.